Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 5th of July. India's Mumbai city under alert after heavy rainfall waterlogging nightmare returns. Crisis hit Sri Lanka to present debt restructure plan to IMF by August, says PM Vikramasinghe. And cattle traders in Afghanistan bemoan slow business ahead of Eid al Adha festival. And now for all the details. An orange alert with a warning of heavy rainfall has been issued for the next five days over India's financial capital, Mumbai, and other parts of Maharashtra state by the Weather Office. The monsoon rain since the past 24 hours brought back water logging woes on Tuesday across the city, which lies on the coast of the Arabian Sea. <music> India's financial capital, Mumbai, was put under heavy rain alert by the Indian Meteorological Department as incessant rainfall lashed the city on Tuesday. The Regional Weather Office predicted heavy rains to continue in Mumbai and other parts of Maharashtra state till Friday. The monsoon rains for the past 24 hours brought back annual waterlogging wars and traffic snarls. Municipal workers were seen clearing congested roads across Mumbai, which lies on the coast of the Arabian Sea. Authorities have deployed teams of National Disaster Response Force across Maharashtra in the wake of the alert. On Tuesday, a landslide was also reported in Ghatkopar, a suburb of eastern Mumbai, in which a house collapsed. There was, however, no casualty. Mumbai is all five days orange alert, but we are monitoring it. Okay. और बाकी जो आपका जो घाट एरियाज आप घाट एरियाज आप और मध्य महाराष्ट्र है जैसे मान लीजिए सतारा कोलापुर पुणे यानी फिर नासिक में भी बाद में नासिक में डे फोर डे फाइव में उसमें भी रेड अलर्ट रहेगा। Meanwhile, the flood situation in northeastern Assam state has improved as water is receding, but over 1.4 million people still remain affected due to the deluge which has killed over 180, officials said. Heavy monsoons are a yearly occurrence in the country, resulting in flooding and landslide which force residents to flee their homes in several areas. And moving on to news from Sri Lanka, Prime Minister Daniel Vikramasinghe on Tuesday told the parliament that the crisis hit Sri Lanka will present a debt restructuring plan to International Monetary Fund IMF by the end of August in a bid to win approval for a four-year funding program. Speaking after a recent visit by an IMF delegation, Vikramasinghe outlined a roadmap to chart a way out of the crisis. We are now participating in the negotiations as a bankrupt country, he said, adding that Sri Lanka has to face a more difficult and complicated situation than previous negotiations. Vikramasinghe said Sri Lanka still had payments of nearly $21 billion lined up until the end of 2025. He said after reaching the IMF agreement, the island nation aims to hold a donor conference with friendly countries such as China, India and Japan to secure more loans. Last week, the IMF said talks with Sri Lanka had been constructive, raising hopes it would soon grant preliminary approval for financial support package. President Gotabaya Rajpaksa was forced to leave the Tuesday's proceedings as the opposition protested his attendance in the parliament. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's finance minister Mifta Ismail has rejected reports that IMF's loan program for the country has been postponed, saying that there is no truth to it and the bailout deal is on track. This comes as the government last week removed subsidies on fuel in a bid to trim fiscal deficit and secure resumption of the much-needed IMF program. Pakistan's Finance Minister Mifta Ismail on Monday refuted reports claiming that the International Monetary Fund's loan program for Pakistan had been postponed due to an alleged impasse over anti-corruption regulations. Taking to Twitter, he said there was no truth to it and the bailout deal was on track. 
This comes as the Pakistan government last week hiked fuel prices once again to a record high in a bid to trim fiscal deficit and secure resumption of the IMF bailout deal. Petrol prices have reached nearly Rs 250 per litre after the move. Pakistan's inflation rate also hit a 13-year high at 21.3% in June, the Statistics Bureau said last Friday. Meanwhile, in a major blow for residents of financial capital Karachi, the National Electric Power Regulatory Authority, NEPRA, this Monday approved another hike of Rs 9.42 per unit, despite the city facing long hours of load shedding. The prolonged power cuts amid extremely humid and hot weather had sparked public protests around the city last week, with reports of clashes between police and protesters, in which several were injured and a 60-year-old woman died amid shelling and police bait and charge. The incessant load shedding has become an alarming situation as it negatively impacts the city's economic activities. And more news from Pakistan. The campaigning for the bipoles in at least 20 constituencies of Pakistan's most populous Punjab province is gaining momentum. Hitting out at opposition PTI's chairman Imran Khan, Maryam Nawaz, leader of ruling PMLN, party said the ousted prime minister stays the biggest drama in the history of Pakistan under the name of foreign conspiracy linked to the fall of his government. <laughs> Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz PMLN Vice President Maryam Nawaz addressed a rally in Lahore on Monday, where she lashed out at opposition Pakistan Tehreek in Saf's chairman Imran Khan for ignoring Punjab province and termed him as the biggest enemy of Lahore and Punjab. The bipoll for 20 vacant seats in the Punjab Assembly is a war for development of the province, she added. Maryam also called Khan's allegations of foreign conspiracy linked to the fall of his government the biggest drama in Pakistan's history. Khan had been maligning U.S. diplomat Donald Liu in his speeches and his party representative has now apologized to him and sought forgiveness from the U.S. official, she added. <laughs> Speaking on the economic situation of Pakistan, the PMLN vice president said that her party, which is ruling at the center, will work day and night to get the people out of the tough situation. Meanwhile, as electioneering picks up steam, Imran Khan will from July 7 to 15 go on a rally spree across Punjab province to woo the voters. The bipoles is slated to be held on July 17. Re-election for the post of Chief Minister of Punjab will be held on July 22. The current Chief Minister, PMLN's Hamza Sharif, will continue in the post till then. Moving on, paramedical staff in Gilgit, Baltistan recently staged a demonstration to demand COVID risk allowance for their services amidst the pandemic. They said the risk allowance, which was promised, has not been included in the recent budget allotted to the illegally occupied region. Doctors and other paramedical staff in Gilgit, Baltistan recently held a protest to demand COVID-19 risk allowance which was promised to them for their services when the pandemic was at its peak. The protesters lamented the risk allowance has not been included in the recent budget allotted to the illegally occupied region. They said they worked through day and night and dealt with a large number of patients amid a lack of safety gear, masks and sanitizers. And some of them also contracted the virus. They said they will continue protests until their demands are met. Our doctors and our paramedics have अपने तमाम पोषण पोषण करके रात दिन तमाम रोगों की खदमत की, ठीक है? उसमें प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ पाकिस्तान और तमाम चीफ मिनिस्टर्स ने चारों पांचों सबों के मिनिस्टर्स ने ये ऐलान किया था और वादा किया था कि हम पुराने रिस्क लाउंस दे देंगे। तो हमें तीन महीने दे दिया, उसके बाद जो है वादे प Government employees in Gilgit, Baltistan have to often hit the streets to demand even their basic rights such as salaries and allowances. 
and Afghanistan is in a deep economic crisis as billions in central bank reserves have been frozen. While humanitarian assistance continues to flow, aid needed for longer-term development was halted when the Taliban took over Kabul last August as foreign forces withdrew. With Afghans plunging into poverty, cattle traders complain slow business ahead of Eid al-Adha festival unlike previous years. Market traders in Afghanistan have bemoaned the lack of customers purchasing sacrificial cattle ahead of Eid al-Adha, one of the two most important festivals of the Islamic calendar. Animals such as cows and goats are slaughtered to commemorate a sacrifice by the Prophet Ibrahim of his son on God's command. Local residents in capital Kabul said that under the new Taliban regime, poverty has increased and people cannot afford to buy the cattle. According to livestock traders, the cost of feeding cattle had increased too, which in turn would raise prices and further exacerbate a lack of business. After the Taliban took over Kabul last August, the pullout and cutoffs by the United States and other funders of direct assistance on which the impoverished nation dependent worsened financial and humanitarian crises that have seen the economy collapse and millions endure food shortages. Foreign governments have said that the Taliban needs to change its course on women's rights before economic sanctions imposed after the seized power can be lifted. Muslims in Afghanistan will begin celebrations for Eid al-Adha from July 9th. And moving on to news from Nepal, Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Diyobar reshuffled his cabinet for the sixth time in a year, inducting three new ministers from the Janata Samajwadi Party Nepal or GSPN, a member of the ruling coalition. GSPN lawmakers Mohammad Ishtiaq Rai, Pradeep Yadav and Migendra Kumar Singh Yadav were inducted in the cabinet as ministers of physical infrastructure and transport, forest and environment and agriculture and livestock development respectively. President Bidya Devi Bhandaris were in the newly inducted ministers in the presence of PM Deoba on Monday. This is the second time in a week that Deoba has reshuffled his cabinet. A few days ago, Deoba changed the four ministers in the cabinet upon the recommendation of the ruling Communist Party of Nepal Unified Socialist. And India's first transgender film and publication company has been opened in southern Madurai city. The Transgender Resource Center, as it is known, boasts more than 200 books in English and Tamil languages under its banner. India's first transgender film and publication company has been opened in Madurai city of southern Tamil Nadu state which is dedicated to literature and films by and for the transgender community. The library in the premises of the Transgender Resource Center boasts more than 200 books in English and Tamil languages under its banner, featuring transgender authors and narratives about the community. The Resource Center also aims to promote films about transgender persons to provide them representation. Or Kutti Library Armacho, Adi Valande, Mikapere Library Rak, Kitata Tail Padina or Yanur Kamala, Tamil Angel and Ulgal Trick, Vera Piramolical Nulgal Trick, or Patay the Kamala, Sidital Tarogal Trick, other Mega Mukiaman on in a Ore at the Tirangal Tarbaga, Ayatla Tonur Larni Porgi or a Sidital Tarogal of Dina, the Wunda, and Yadu Patay the Kamala Sidital Tarogal, they were a government or day orders, Supreme Court or a Tirpul, Ipanaman Alavari and Marmashangling, and Alavari to a year. Meeting minutes are like a Tirman and Gal Mudi will be Palvera wishing Lirigade. India's Supreme Court ruled in 2014 that transgender people had equal rights, but prejudice against them persists, and they are often rejected by their families, denied jobs, education, and health care. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tech TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.